keep talking about theory. Isn't it? Because mm -hmm. agriculture is is more of a practical uh, subject. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, theory always precedes what practicals, isn't it? So it's good to remind ourselves time and again of uh, the things that should propel us to the kind of agriculture that the Lord wants us to practice. So before we proceed, I'll ask us to kneel for a word of prayer. Maybe I would start by asking or observing. When we were growing up as little children, especially in this generation, you know, our parents, most of them had come from that previous generation. And uh, uh, land inheritance was becoming not was becoming diminished, isn't it? So, what was it that our parents oftentimes told us is the only inheritance I can leave for you? Education, education, isn't it? So many vijana, mungeze pia bidet, mwisho akusoma, tapata kazi And this was a philosophy that. Uh, rally many a young person towards uh, putting their efforts to achieve a good education in the hope of a good life thereafter. The only inheritance that our parents then could give unto us. Besides a few pieces of land here and there, isn't it? Land wasn't the 10, 20, 100 acres that they themselves had inherited, isn't it? So land is becoming more and more diminished, but, well, there are still vast lands. But education was the emphasis uh, as we were growing up. And so in your small mind as a child, I'm sure you must have had a picture of what you wanted to become. Yeah? Maybe somebody had never driven or seen a vehicle, or, or seen vehicles were rare and wanted to be a driver. Another had seen an aeroplane fly over their heads and wanted to be an, uh, a, a pilot. And other careers were pictured in our minds. Let me ask us, between your childhood dreams and what you ultimately became, how many of us can attest that my childhood dream is what I am today? Bits and pieces of. Bits and pieces of. Yeah. Not all. Yeah. And some way off, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Way off what we had desired to be. But again, let me ask us. What is God's destiny for his children? And you, I'll beg your, your pardon because I didn't pick the reference for this. But what's God's destiny? I'm, I'm talking... Brother Njo talked about the remnant of the remnant, isn't it? So the assumption is the remnant of the remnant should be knowing the answer to this question. What is God's destiny for his children? Open question. Ultimate destiny. Ultimate destiny. Yes, to live in a new earth, to live in gardens like the Garden of Eden that he had created in the first place. To live in a, in garden estates, environments, mm -hmm. like he had created for Adam at the beginning. Yeah. yeah to live in a new earth. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. What if man had not fallen? What was God's destiny for man? Heaven. Heaven? Yeah, yeah the Bible tells us to complete it, to completely reflect reflect Christ in his image. With what intention? To rule. To rule. Yeah, because man was given dominion, isn't it? But Jehovah has said what? Heaven. Adam, God's ultimate destiny for Adam was heaven. And then White tells us it was God's design, paraphrase, that humanity, you know, we have two probations. And we are not talking about the 1,000 year probation. 
the servant to the remnant talks about man having been given two provisions. The first one was Adam before sin. Yeah? God put him in Eden, time of probation. Should he have proved faithful, then he and his posterity would have filled the vacancies left by Satan and the fallen angels. And if you look at the plan of inspiration, it's also the same, same high destiny for those who shall indeed make faithful use of the second provision. That you and I are destined by God to fill the vacancies that Saturn left and his angels. What a high destiny, friends, that God has designed for his children, faithful children, that we shall indeed uh, fill those vacancies and the honors that come together with, with that position. As God's saved, redeemed, and faithful children. Now, uh, there must be a connection between what caused Saturn to be cast out from those positions and what we must attain to in order to fill those vacancies. Again. There must be a connection between what caused Saturn to be cast out. See, he, already, he and the angels then were already in those positions. Yes. Isn't it? But something happened that caused Saturn to be cast out. The Bible says what? Until iniquity was found, found in him. was found in him. Isn't it? And so, what then must, what status then? You are perfect in all your ways until iniquity was found in thee. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what condition must we attain to? Lack of, in, no sin, sinlessness, perfection. Sinlessness, perfection. No, no iniquity in us if we are to fill those positions. And that's the sole reason that Christ died. Now, uh, let's read Mark Mark 10, 44. Uh, 
told the, lad, the lady of the house, I will not preach to you about Christ again. But did she preach? Yes. Mm. And did she win her soul? Mm. How? Through the work she did. Through the work she did. Practical mm. demonstrations of the gospel. Mm. This is only a very small percentage. It is the life that the church lives that will convince the world of the power and the authenticity of the gospel. Mm. So friends, you know, at, at, at floor, to be honest, when you first invited me for this meeting, I was like, is it just going to be another, like, mm. yeah? Remember, last time Jao preached about going with Mount, around Mount Sia for too long. Hmm? How long? It's a year down the line since we were last year. How long? And friends, I think then we'll need to make real good use of the time slots for planning the way forward. And not just leave it on paper, but indeed be able to uh, commit ourselves to its commitment. So for Christ, nature was, was his resource yeah, for ideas of how to serve, how to minister. And friends, we must get back there by God's grace. So the question is, what does selfless... Okay, I wanted to... This quote is very common. Uh, I forgot my, my uh, patriarchs and prophets. But this quote is, I think it's also in Desire of Ages, page 20. I think it, we are familiar with this. Uh, you know, the law of heaven, which is the law of service, uh, uh, Ellen White talks, uh, highlights it in page 20 and 21 of uh, Desire of Ages. Uh, I want to pick it from where she says, but turning from all lesser representations, we behold God in Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, we see that it is the glory of our God to give. Uh, quoting Christ, she says, I do nothing of myself, said Christ. The living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. I seek not my own glory, but the glory of him that sent me. John 8.28 uh, and those are the references. In this word is set forth the great principle which is the law of life for the universe. All things Christ received from God, but he took to do what? To give. To give. So in the heavenly courts, in his ministry for all created beings, through the beloved Son, the Father's life flows out to all. Through the sun, it returns in praise and joyous service, a tide of love to the great source of all. And thus, through Christ, the circuit of benevolence is complete, representing the character of the great giver, the law of life. And then she says, that's uh, Desire of Ages, page 21. <coughs> then she says, in the last paragraph of page 21, and that is the, the standard, not this small one. Yeah? The standard. In the last paragraph she says, In heaven itself, this law was broken. Sin originated in self-seeking. So, friends, what does this law of selfless love, this law of ministry, this law of service, this law of giving, do to the giver? Is it just giving, giving, or there's a recompense? There is a recompense. Yeah? That yields blessing to all who endeavor to enter into that circuit of benevolence. Education page 103, paragraph 
uh, we are told that as each thing in nature ministers thus to the world's life, it also secures its own. Give and it shall be given unto you is the lesson written no less surely in nature than in the pages of holy right. So as we minister to the world's life, what happens to us? We are ministered unto. Yeah? And if you look at Patriots and Prophet, she says squarely that our happiness is based on this. Do you know, friends, by the way, by the way, that right at the center of your brain is what scientists call the pleasure center, the limbic system. Yeah? The world has sought to stimulate it by ways of sin. Are we together? Mm -hmm. why, why is the world basically running up after the, the things they are, they are doing? Talk of drugs, talk of fornication, happiness. talk of corruption. Everybody in pursuit of what? Happiness. Of happiness. But friends, they cannot and we cannot achieve happiness outside of this law that God has established as the law of the universe. Yeah? The law of service. And so, how does this then connect with agriculture? Uh, in uh, Education Again, page 13, let me see if I get this right. This is very familiar to many of us. Uh, when we are told that education, you know, the definition that the pen of inspiration gives us is that education is the harmonious development of the physical, mental, and spiritual powers of man. She also says it prepares the student for the joy of service in this world and for the higher joy of wider service in the world to come. So let me get your thoughts. We are told that education is the harmonious development of our three fold faculties, isn't it? Now, how does this development take place? Which one comes first? Education, then development. Or development, which is the cause and which is the effect? Education is the cause of the development. Education is the cause of development. Definition is education is the harmonious development, isn't it? Of the three faculties. Yeah? Then it says it prepares the student for uh, the joy of service in this world and for the higher joy of the wider service in the world to come. So, which one comes first, service or development? Okay, Adam, let's go back to Adam. Let's go back to Adam. Adam was created perfect. Isn't it? There was a period of, of, of probation. Was there a development that was to take in place in Adam? Yes. Yes, isn't it? So, uh, for him to be educated, for his faculties to be developed, he needed to give service. Sindio? Service is the means by which our three faculties develop after the divine order. We can't develop after the image of Christ when we are not in harmony with the law of service. When I am serving myself, is there harmonious development in me? But when I am serving others, is there development in, in taking place in me? Yes. So service comes 
first. And then the joy of that service is the reward that we constantly receive. Yeah? And the development that is attached to that. And by the way, that development was de designed by God to be throughout the eternal ages. Sindio? Yes. So then, uh, if service comes first, and if our resources, as Christ found his resources in nature, are in nature, then how does this connect with agriculture? Uh, in a book called Place Called Upward, but this was in letter 289 of 1907, manuscript release, <coughs> page 274. She says that education, that the ABCs of what? Education. The ABCs of, of industrial education is agriculture. Sorry, I didn't quote the, get the, the, the complete quote. But she says, the ABC, she, she mentioned it in, in the prayer, that the ABCs of education is agriculture. agriculture. Yeah? So the ABCs of development is what? Agriculture. Is agriculture. Isn't it? <clears throat> and so agriculture holds for us lessons and ideas from God by which we can find ideas for serving fellow humanity. Is the world right now in need of our service? Mm -hmm. Urgently. Mm -hmm. Amma, we can afford to wait another five years. No. Okay. What are some of the needs of the world right now? Of which we need to start minister. We need to, like yesterday, be ministering. Mm -hmm. Proper food. Proper food? Sickness. Sickness? Character. Character. No. It's a thorn in the flesh in this country mm -hmm. today. Integrity. Yeah? The youth today, I mean you guys, I think even your own relatives, I know my own relatives. Where the youth, my, 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 my nephew born the other day, telling the teacher, I mean, it's a thorn in the flesh in this country. Mm. Eh? But you only need to look at the background in which he was brought up and understand why he is what he is. Friends, there are resources that God has committed unto us that we need to start using to minister to our suffering humanity today. And unless we put our act together, then much will be required of what? Of us. And... Uh, What I'm trying to, to echo in these few minutes that we have is that we need to look at this true education that is based on agriculture, how it can be used to be of service to mankind today in our context. Because there are brethren doing something elsewhere in other mission fields. Yeah? But in our current mission field, there's a great want, and you will bear me witness to that. Yeah? If it's the food, we've been talking about food forever. Since your floor, since 20, when was the gym first come to New Life? 08 or 08? 2008, isn't it? Yeah. 10 years ago? Yes. Yes. Show me one lunch today in Kenya that is fully organic. And, you know, produce is going out into the market. If you look at councils on health, you'll understand why. Real food needs to be getting to the people. Yeah? Show me one in Kenya in 10 years. So what have we been eating? Poison. So how can we develop our mental faculties? Feeding on that. Yeah? Show me one, 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 one 
institution that is taking the most corrupt of characters and presenting them and giving them an environment where they are healing from the damages of sin done unto them. In Kenya. Is there? In fact, show me one homestead where the principles of true education are being practiced in totality. Isn't that telling on us? And the big question is, why? Remember Christ found his illustrations where? In nature. I'll just mention one. Again, my apologies. I didn't have time to gather all my notes on this. Yeah? Uh, but I'll give it in a nutshell and hope that the lesson will come home. Uh, Flo is blessed to live next to a forest. Yeah? And uh, uh, it's a lesson that is found primarily uh, in the forest. Actually, my resource got lost. It was a book called Nature's Quest. If any one of you, by James A. Tucker, if any one of you has, uh, uh, has that book, uh, you'll, you'll, see, you'll find that lesson. Uh, James A. Tucker, uh, Nature Quest. It's a devotional based on, on nature. So, he says some of the biggest, and this is confirmed by many uh, scientific journals, some of the biggest trees in the forest, no, they have canopies. So, when I put a zingine, at a jewel, Lakini ukienda pale unakuta that thing growing under that canopy is thriving. Yet we know from science that that thing needs sunlight falling on its leaves to produce its, its what? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis produces chewers and all other biochemicals for it to thrive. Isn't it? So how is this thing under these massive trees thriving? In that canopy. Well, you go to the roots. Yeah? In the root, in a teaspoon, there are so many microbes of different varieties. Yeah? But for this lesson, one stands out. It's called micro, my, mycorrhizal fungi. Yeah? This fungi, since it refundis your shule, I call fungi in a cause disease too. Sindio? You think of fungi, women will think of candida. Sindio? Yeah? Lakini, they are in the minority, they are actually 0 point something percent that cause disease. The rest are beneficial. Just like they are beneficial bacteria, they are beneficial microbes. Yeah? Uh, this micro, mycorrhizal of fungi, basically, uh, it creates a web it actually first attaches itself to the roots of the trees They're of two kinds. There's one that will coil itself around the root of the tree. There's another that will actually uh, penetrate the root itself without damaging the tree. Yeah? Now, Zina depend on the tree for nutrition. Yeah? But is it paras para para it's not is it parasitic? Uh -uh. As it feeds from the tree, you know the sugars, amino acids, you name it, and I think fat, uh, fatty acids. As it feeds from the tree, in turn it is growing uh, filaments, yeah, and it basically goes to the uh, rocks that are in the soil. It creates or produces enzymes that digest the rock. From the rock, can a tree feed from the rock? Directly. Directly. Yeah. No. The inorganic minerals are not available to the true roots of the, the, the tree. Yeah? So this fungi, basically, because of the, 
the tree had done for it, it says thank you, it goes and, and, and creates uh, soluble, it converts the inorganic minerals to organic minerals. Yeah? Ships them direct to, to the tree. Now the question is, if this thing is feeding one whose canopy is covered, is not seeing the sun, where is the nutrition? Because it's supposed to be a two-way traffic. Mm. This thing, they actually form a network, a web, where it connects not only with one tree, but many trees. So even with the big, big trees, this same <coughs> fungi will go and connect. So it will take uh, nutrients from one tree and feed to trees which are nutrient deficient. Did you get the lesson? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. it was a, taking from one to feed another. Mm -hmm. Another. Yeah? So, the point that I'm trying to bring home is that this fungi connects the various trees so that the sunlight that is coming from this massive tree, through this massive tree, through the fungi, it goes and feeds the small tree. And the small tree survives where? In that dense uh, forest. Now, if you want to destroy the small tree, destroy what? The fungi. The fungi. The fungi. One, two, the big tree. The big tree. Sharing of resources in God's Yeah? What lesson is there for us? This is a lesson from nature. And any farmer who will be able to replicate what this is doing in the forest will have a thriving garden. It has been proved. They are culturing those fungi, but unfortunately they are only going for, for single, single strains. Yeah? Single strains of, of fungi. And that's not how God works because there are multiple of them, multiple of them in, in nature. So, uh, science is culture. You go to the university, I think of Nairobi, they're, they're actually doing that. Yeah, they're culturing this, this fungi. Uh, but in nature, you have what? Multiple varieties. And any farmer that will be able to replicate what is happening in nature will be able to have a thrive in what? God. So, while God is doing that in the forest, what does he expect to be doing in the garden of our hearts? Large tree, small tree, all thriving in that, in that forest. What is the object lesson, my friends? successful in God's work. I cannot say I am going to minister alone. It won't work. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. To give the kind of service that the world needs today, friends, we need each other. Because the resources you have, Brother Ken, is not the resources I have. The resources Brother Titus has is, are not the resources Sister Edith has, or Sister Florence has. True. But nutrients, or oh, resources can be, can be charged, just like nutrients and water. By the way, okay. Uh, guys are looking for water to nourish gardens. And the secrets of how to, to culture this, this fungi. And even water resources in your garden will thrive. Yeah? Because it shuttles, it shuttles nutrients and water and there's communication between tree and tree and between microbes and trees. This has been established by science today. Yeah? Why do you think that God will give us microscopic eyesight? when we are, we, are, we are translated. 
You see, our eye, as we are told, courtesy of the pen of inspiration, our eye will be unique. It will have the ability for local, you know, kawaii, kama sasa bila tunaonani. Lakini beyond that, it will have a telescopic vision and a microscopic vision. Vision. Why do you think God will give us a microscopic vision? To see a world that our natural eyes cannot do what? See. Because there are lessons there in, in the unseen. Yeah? And out there in the universe, that telescopic eye. So the question is, these trees shuttling nutrients as per need, shuttling nutrients and water, <coughs> the end result is a thriving what? Forest. The end result can be a thriving garden. So, if we release our resources, do you think, friends, that Adventism will be known by a new name? If we release our resources, which we have today, do you think Adventism in Kenya will be known by a new name? I'm seeing. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes. yes friends. Yeah? If we release the resources that we are holding and allow them to enter this circuit of benevolence, then it is possible for us to hasten Christ's soon return. Yeah? In, uh, in, in, uh, in 1, 1 BC, page 111. And Flo, tell me, I didn't check what time I started. Tell me when I'm supposed to see. Yeah? Okay. 1 BC, uh, page 1112, paragraph 5. Please hear this. It captulates uh, what I'm trying to say. In an uh, this is a commentary on Leviticus 25, uh, verses 20, 18 to 22. We are told that uh, the tithing system, yes, the tithing system was instituted by the Lord as the very best arrangement to help the people in carrying out the principles of the law. If this law were obeyed, the people would be entrusted with the entire vineyard, the whole earth. Had God's law been obeyed, of which the tithing system had been instituted to help the people in carrying out. God would have entrusted the whole earth upon who? The children of Israel. Isn't it? We are told, Father, men were to cooperate with God in restoring the diseased land to help, that it might be a praise and a glory to his name. And as the land they possessed would, if managed with skill, and earnestness produce its treasures, so their hearts, if controlled, would reflect his character. You see how the two go together? There's this guy working with the hands, isn't he? But at the same time, his character is doing what? He's being molded after God's character. She says, in the laws which God gave for the cultivation of the soil, he was giving the people opportunity to overcome their selfishness and become 
heaven, heavenly minded. In the laws which God gave for the cultivation of the soil, he was giving the people what? Opportunity to overcome their selfishness and become heavenly minded. Canaan would be to them as Eden if they obeyed the word of the Lord. Through them, the Lord designed to teach all nations of the world how to cultivate the soil so that it would yield healthy fruit free from disease. Friends, is it self-explanatory? So, ancient Israel failed. Question is, is this promise still open for fulfillment? Mm. 